Hi, I'm Lieutenant Commander Doug McLean, the number three pilot for the United States Navy Blue Angels. This is not an inherently dangerous business, but it is uh, very unforgiving. My name is Captain Kevin Lauber. I'm the Marine Corps representative on the team, and I fly the number two jet, the right wing position in the diamond. Do I ever get scared? Do I ever have any close calls? If it was dangerous or if it was scary, my mom would let me do it. I'm Lieutenant Commander Mark Ziegler. My position in the formation is basically the safety observer. It's quite a lot of fun. My name's Lieutenant Commander Cliff Skelton. I'm the lead solo for the Blue Angels. The high G environment itself is just a matter of grunting and groaning and trying to keep yourself from graying out and giving yourself as many Gs as you can possibly give. I'm Commander Pat Moneymaker, a squadron flight leader and squadron commanding officer of the Blue Angels. My name is Lieutenant Bruce Dillard. I am Blue Angel number eight, the events coordinator. Blue Angels represents a time-honored uh, tradition of uh, pride, professionalism, and excellence. I saw my first Blue Angel Air Show when I was about nine years old. Uh, I thought that was really something. I really did. And of course, after I uh, got into the Marine Corps and started flying jets, I wondered if I might have an opportunity to, uh, to join the team. Every woman and every man knows the feeling so well. Those times when the heart just can't understand. The times when you never As a child, I first saw the Blue Angels when I was in eighth grade. And uh, when I saw that blue jet go over my head with two balls of fire coming out of the back, uh, that pretty much set the score for me. When I was a young man, I saw the Blue Angels reform, which had a large uh, impact on my desire to, to fly airplanes. Sometimes I wonder if this is worth the trouble. Sometimes I wonder if this is worth the fight. Inside the cockpit of one of our aircraft, or any naval jet aircraft, uh, there are moments of a very docile activity, just much like flying in an airliner. That can soon turn into incredible violence inside the cockpit. Our bodies go through gravitational forces up to approximately eight times the pull of normal gravity. Uh, in order to do that, 
we've got to stay in top physical condition. So it's very important that each one of us be mentally prepared and physically prepared for each flight that we go up on. The F-18 has a pitch rate that's really second to none. It will turn a corner faster than just about any other airplane in the world today. We don't wear G-suits, so you've got to become accustomed to the, to the high-G environment in this airplane. The high-G environment is, is rather difficult to explain. It feels like your face is coming down towards your legs. Uh, if you're sweating it all, the sweat's pouring down your face, and it's just a matter of, of uh, trying to keep all that blood up in your head to keep from, from passing out. When you roll over and pull negative Gs or push forward on the stick, uh, it's just the opposite. Everything feels like it's going towards your head. All the blood is rushing to your head and away from the rest of your body. It's much more uncomfortable to pull negative Gs than it is for positive Gs. All of us here uh, fly the F-18 with the Blue Angels. In my case, uh, F-18 school was, uh, was really a lot of fun. The great thing about the F-18 is that it's a very, very easy airplane to fly. It's a magnificent machine. As a naval aviator, I take my $20 million airplane, I launch off an aircraft carrier, I go out, I do the mission required, whether it's air-to-air -air combat or dropping ordnance on a target, either simulated or real, and then coming back and landing on the aircraft carrier. The basics of naval aviation are the same with the F-18 as they are with any other aircraft, in that uh, you still have to learn to fight the airplane, you have to learn to fight other aircraft with it, you have to learn how to drop bombs off the aircraft, you have to learn how to land the airplane on a ship. So what you do in F-18 school is basically learn all the systems on the airplane first, go through a basic ground school course, and then you get involved in some basic handling characteristics of the airplane. Takeoffs, landings. And then you start moving into uh, some more advanced stages of uh, aircraft handling, such as acrobatics. We also did uh, some basic uh, bombing patterns, some air-to-air -air, uh, dogfighting, if you will, uh, just to give us a good, thorough sound knowledge of the F-18 before we came to the Blue Angels. The heads-up display is probably the best part about this airplane. Everything you need to know about delivering the ordnance, your airspeed, your altitude, your flight path angle is all right there in front of you. You never have to look inside the cockpit. Daytime landing aboard the carrier is, is very challenging, but at the same time, fairly fun. 
In the evening, though, when the sun goes down and, and things get black, it turns to all work. Uh, I've never done anything as hard as land on a carrier at night. I have approximately 120 night carrier arrested landings, and uh, each one of them are memorable. I've never been scared flying a Blue Angel aircraft because it's, it's, a, it's the type of environment where you do the same thing every day, day in and day out, and you have control over your surroundings. You have control over your aircraft and what you do with it. You don't always have control over an aircraft carrier and the environmental surroundings. So the experience you get and the ability you have to cope with the changing environment on an aircraft carrier, I think make you a better aviator, and being a better aviator makes you a better Blue Angel pilot. Now, being a Marine pilot here on the team is uh, really quite a lot of fun. So I represent the Marine Corps and all the pilots that are out there right now doing their job in the fleet. Those of us that are flying these blue jets and wearing these blue suits are, are lucky to be doing this, and there's a lot of guys out there that can do the same job we do. Working aboard the carrier is, uh, is truly exciting. It's about as challenging a job as, as I could ever imagine having. All Blue Angels are carrier aviators, that's one of the requirements. They have to have a tour on an aircraft carrier, and most of us have over 1,500 flight hours and probably close to 400 arrested landings. Baby, I got my finger right on your pulse, and just like a drum. I need a little bit of Coca-Cola, I need me a shot of Rodrigo 151. Ain't nothing in this whole wide world worth having.
have about 80 enlisted personnel on the team, and uh, they all have very, very high recommendations from uh, senior ranking officers and the senior ranking enlisted uh, personnel. They also have to work on, under the concept of teamwork. Uh, they have to be able to get together and work together with the people in their shops. Uh, those guys work very, very hard. Uh, they work 12, 13, 14 hours a day, and they come right back and do it again. And they are by far the very best in the Navy. One thing that's really special about the Blue Angels is, is that uh, you get a, a real sense of loyalty, a sense of dedication to duty, and a sense of patriotism and, and camaraderie that you will not find in the, in the average business world. Becoming a Blue Angel was the highlight of my career. We have a lot of good people, men and women, in this squadron, and it's just a great honor to work with these pilots and the men and women of Blue Angels. Slamming. What the public doesn't know is that to make some of these airplanes work that particular day for their air show that they've driven to see, it may have required uh, a crew working all night. And that's the same crew that's out there in front of the airplane directing it. We are a flight demonstration squadron, but we are a uh, flight demonstration team, first and foremost. Now, teamwork means a lot to us. Teamwork is really the key to how we can uh, put on a great air show throughout the season. In preparation for an air show, it's important that, that your concentration is 110% toward the job at hand. When you walk out to an air show and you see uh, two, three, four hundred thousand people waiting out there to watch you fly and you realize you're, the, you're a basic standard naval aviator, you just happen to be lucky enough to, fly in a, to be flying a blue jet and wearing a blue flight suit, you realize that uh, these people think you're something special. 
Our air show takes about the exact same concentration required to land on the carrier, except the carrier approach only lasts about uh, 30 to 60 seconds, and the air show lasts 45 minutes. We can't get uh, too distracted by outside influences. It's very important that we maintain a positive mental attitude as we climb into our airplanes. Once you get into the cockpit, though, once you've shut the canopy, once you turn the engines on, and once you start taxiing, it all goes away. You don't even know there's one person on the ground. Every maneuver that we do has its own safety valves in case something does go wrong, if I should lose my radio or have an aircraft mechanical problem. Everybody in the formation has a piece of sky that they can go to, and that's throughout the entire maneuver. And there are voice procedures that allow us, with, with very few words, to get a lot of meaning out. We're on the runway. Do a wind check. Maneuver the diamond burner loop to the left turnout. Let's run them up. Off brakes now. Burners ready now. What's it like to, uh, to be up there flying in the jet? Well, let me just tell you, it's, uh, it's a fantastic experience. I wish I could take you along, put you in the cockpit with me so you could see what it's like.
most fun part is the smile you can bring to the faces of a lot of kids at an air show, of, of some of the handicapped kids we work with. You see some of these kids go out and watch you fly these blue jets and you realize that uh, you're putting a smile on the face of a kid that, uh, that thinks you're kind of a hero. The best part about being a member of the Blue Angels is that we get the opportunity to relate to the American public. We go ahead and, uh, and recruit for the Navy and the Marine Corps, but at the same time we're also promoting a positive image and trying to produce a role model for our young people today. Being a, uh, a pilot with the Blue Angels is, uh, is a combination of things. It's a great honor. It's uh, just a heck of a lot of fun. A lucky guy, and it's uh, super time.